So this tutorial will show you how to take um, the data from the starch and amylase experiment and to turn it into a good graph using Excel. Uh, now I've just got the data here as an image on the page. All right, so this is just a cut and paste job from OneNote. Um, that's not necessarily going to be in your Excel sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a little data table within Excel. So I need a column for temperature. Uh, and I'm going to make sure I've got my units in my column headers. Okay, so I'm going to separate the unit from uh, the title with a little slash like this, or you could maybe put it in brackets, it doesn't really matter. And then I want to degree centigrade. All right, so I'm going to use a lowercase o and a capital C, and then I'm going to select the little lowercase o like that. Okay, and then I come up, come up to the font menu here, and this little pull out arrow in the corner is going to give me a superscript option. So I'm just going to click on that. And then I get these additional formatting things. And here, if I click superscript, I'm hoping my little O is going to jump up. There it goes. So my little O is turned into a degree centigrade sign. Now the other thing is at the moment this column isn't wide enough to fit all of that in. You can see it's overlapping into the H column. So I'm just going to click this little down arrow here and get the whole column and then I can just drag the edge of the column out to make it a bit wider and now it all fits in there nicely. I need another column for the rate of reaction. Okay, now rate of reaction doesn't have any units because of the way uh, that we've calculated it. Okay, so we use 330 seconds divided by time in seconds. The seconds cancel out. So there aren't any units this time for rate of reaction. That doesn't matter, it just means that a rate of reaction of 3.6 is 3.6 times faster than the rate of reaction of 1. You might have to have a unit in here if you've done it a slightly different way. Now, grab the H and let's drag the edge of this out a little bit wider. Okay, bring this back here just for convenience. Now, my temperatures, 20 and 30. Uh, now, I've only got five temperatures to put in. I could put them in by hand, 40, 50, 60. All right, that would probably be the quickest way, but I just want to show you a trick. If I grab around 20 and 30, click and drag, and then I've got this little green square at the bottom right corner of the selection box. If I hover over that, I get an X thing, like a target thing, and I can click on that and drag down, and a little number appears on the right, and that's the maximum value. And what I could do, yeah, is I could take that all the way down to 300. If I let go, it writes in all the temperatures for me. Okay, I actually don't need all those temperatures. I only need to go up to, 50, to 60, so I'm just going to delete these again. Okay, that's a useful trick if you've got a long columns with lots of predictable numbers. The rates of reaction I'm going to type in, 1.0. Now, you notice that the point zero has disappeared. Okay, Excel remembers it's there, though. Um, and I'm going to show you a trick in a minute to get it to show it to us. 1.2, 1.8, 3.6, Okay, and again, the point zero has disappeared. It's also centered that one very nicely for us, never mind. Um, I want to see the 1.0. I want to see 0, 0.0, because the convention is, the rule is that when you make a table, all the numbers in a particular column, so all the numbers in my rate of reaction column, ought to be shown to the same number of decimal places. So I'm going to drag around the whole thing and I'm going to use this little thing up here. I've got two options here in the number section. Yeah, I can increase decimal or I can decrease decimal. If I decrease decimal, look, it's rounded them all up. Okay, if I click the other one, yeah, it shows them all to 1 dp, and now the point zeros have come back, which is what I wanted. Okay, Now, it's a bit messy at the moment. These are all on the right, and these ones are centered. These ones are all on the right. I'm just going to drag around everything here, all of my data, and I'm going to use the centering tool here just to get everything to look nice. Okay, so that's my data table, and now I can get rid of this. I'm just going to get rid of that. It's gone. Okay, what we want to do now is a graph. So for the graph, I'm going to go up to the insert menu and collect this. Okay, because this has got all of the kind of various graph options at the top. 
Now the easiest way to come up with the right graph is to let Excel do the thinking for you. So if you click and drag around everything, and then you go up to recommended charts and see what it suggests. So we click on that. And what it's suggesting now is a range of options. So we could have a bar chart like this, okay, or we could have like horizontal bars, or we can have a couple of different sort of styles of line bars, and I've got no idea what it's doing down the bottom here. But what I want is I want a line, okay? I'm going to choose this one here. I get a slightly bigger view of it. That looks nice, all right? So we're going to grab that. Okay, so there it is. If I want to make it a bit bigger, I can just grab on the corner, yeah, and I can drag it out a bit bigger. So there it is. Now that looks pretty good. That's quite promising. But at the moment, um, it's not going to score me full marks in an exam because it doesn't have axis titles. So I've got to add some of those. All right, so if I click on it and select it, so I've got these little circles on the corners, I get some, because I've got a PC, I get some formatting options here. Um, if you're on a Mac, you don't get this add chart elements thing, but if you look top left of your screen, it's up here instead. It says add chart element, and I can click on either one of those. All right, I'm going to do it up here. I need labels on my Y and on my X axis. All right, so I'm going to pull this down, and it says axes. Like, well, I've got axes, that's no good. Axes titles is what I want, so I want a title on my horizontal axis, on my X axis, and then I'm going to add another one axis titles for my primary vertical axis. And now I've got two little default boxes here that just say axis title and I need to edit these. So I just click on it and drag and it all um, is now shaded so I can write. This is my temperature. I'm going to use a slash to separate the unit and I'm going to do exactly the same trick as I did before. So lowercase o capital C, I'm going to select that little lowercase o and then I need to go back to the home menu and the font box and click the superscript option. And then my little O place O has turned into a degree sign again. Uh, there is a keyboard shortcut for this, which is shift control plus if you're on a PC. I've got no idea what it is on a Mac. Uh, Axis title here as well I want to change. Okay, so click and drag. It's a bit tricky when it's vertical, but you can just kind of, uh, if you accurate enough with your mouse there you can select all of that and this is our rate of reaction okay return oh no return just click somewhere else okay so I've got nice axes on here as well uh, the title I don't like because it's not very informative rate of reaction of what under what conditions all right so rate of reaction of amylase okay uh, at different temperatures. Oh, let's have capitals, shall we? At different temperatures. Okay, and then I'm going to just drag this and center it up. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's not bad at all. Um, now, if I had a piece of graph paper, though, it would have smaller squares on it, and that would make it easier to take numbers off the graph. I can add those too if I want. Okay, so if I get my um, go back to my insert menu uh, or my um, chart design menu rather, okay, I can back at my chart element. If I want to, I can add some grid lines here too. Okay, so I can I've got the major grid lines already shown. I've got some vertical and horizontal lines, but I want the minor ones. Right, so I can add some grid lines that way, and I can also add some grid lines. Oops. I can also add some vertical grid lines. Okay, so now you can see I've got some smaller squares on there, and I think that looks really nice. So that's my finished graph. Now, if I want to take this into a Word document, all I have to do yeah, is I can just copy it, and I can paste that whole thing into a Word document, just like that, or onto OneNote. 